everyone. Welcome to the Wooly Wonka Fibers podcast. My name is Anne, and today is uh, Sunday, August 7th, 2016. I think this is episode 25. Um, welcome to everyone. If you are a new viewer, thank you for checking out my podcast about knitting and spinning and my indie dye business and my indie design business and all kinds of good crafty things. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support of the podcast. I really appreciate it and um, hope you all will enjoy this week's episode. Um, it's been really nice here. We have had our monsoon flow kick up, which means that we're getting afternoon rain, which has made all of the trees so much happier and um, it cools off the temperatures. We have cloud cover, which then kind of blows off at night. So this morning when we got up, it was actually in the upper 50s here, which felt so good. Um, still hot when the sun's out, as you might guess, because it's mid-August, like you'd expect. Um, but really, very, very nice weather. We've been very fortunate the last several weeks. Um, Today on the podcast, I've got a bunch of different things to share with you guys. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, obviously, my uh, works in progress, my spinning. Um, we're going to talk about the new Filament magazine. Um, and I will tell you some details about that, about how to order, and preview a few of the pieces in it. I'm going to, to divide up the eight garment, or eight finished pieces in filament um, into the next several podcasts. So you guys are getting a sneak peek if you are a viewer. Um, so let's get on with some things. I wanted to um, answer a question from my friend Karen first off um, about the Londonderry jacket that's in Knit Picks um, new Fair Isle collection that I talked about next week. Um, we did a giveaway for this the print copy and those will be going out uh, Monday to those two two winners. Um, she was asking about the jacket and it does look like it's fairly straight here on the cover um, but I think that the way that they have it styled and the way the model is standing is a little bit deceiving. Um, let me show you the schematic if I can. There. Um, so the jacket actually has a bit of a flare to it, and the amount of flare depends on the size that you choose, the finish size that you choose. So for instance, the 36 and a half inch finished bust size, the bottom hem, which like I said last week, is either going to be knee or mid thigh length, depending on your height. Um, that hem is 44 and 3 quarters inches. So you have somewhere between 8 and 9 inches of extra between your finished chest size and where the hem is. And if you look on the picture, um, let's do this, where the smaller um, rows are, there's a couple of rest rows on either side of those. And in each of those there is there are decrease rows because you're knitting this from the bottom up. So you have your initial cast on down here at the hem and then as you work up the fair isle section you're decreasing stitches. There is a little bit of waist shaping so it actually nips in a little at the waist and then increases back out for the bust. So if you were interested in knitting this and were a little bit worried that it's a, you know, all one circumference the whole way down, that's not the case. Um, you'd have part of the issue with the sizing on this, if you wanted to make any kind of alterations, is this pattern right here is very wide. And so in order to get another full repeat, you'd have to add depending on what size you pick, somewhere between 32 and 34 extra stitches to add a repeat of this this particular motif. Not to say you couldn't do that. If you wanted this jacket even more flared, you certainly could do that. And then when you get to here, when you finish this last band, 
you could add some extra decreases here at the waist um, in the plain stockinette and it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt anything at all so you do have some options if you decide that you wanted to make this but I would say the first place to go is to hit the schematic in the pattern that gives you all of the measurements for the finished bust finished waist finished hem and see how much ease you might want um, you could also um, knit back here you could also knit these um, first sections like from there down on a needle size either one or two sizes up and increase the um, uh, circumference without changing the stitch count so obviously it will change the um, gauge for that section which is okay as long as you do a diligent gauge swatch and know kind of what you're getting yourself into um, you know going up one needle size may be enough to because this is a very wide circumference down here at the bottom it may be enough to give you the extra that you need without having to monkey around with numbers so knitter's choice on that you have a couple of different options but I did want to just go over that really quickly in case you were thinking of making the jacket and weren't sure if it was the kind of garment that you that you would like so um, so that's it for that I don't have any finished objects this week I've been working on a couple of bigger projects and so as a result nothing finished in the world of knitting um, but let's talk about what I am working on I'm working on a secret knitting project that's going to be for the shop it's a lace cardigan um, I have finished the first sleeve up to where I'm gonna shape the sleeve cap I like to do one sleeve first because it really nails down my gauge for me um, and so I've gotten that knit up to the underarm and then that's sitting on hold while I knit the body um, the body I cast on this past week I have knit I believe it's eight inches of the body out of the 14 so I'm a little more than halfway up to the armpits I've done all of the waist shaping decreases and I'm almost done working the bust shaping increases um, so that's on the needles that's my still my priority I'm kind of focused on getting as much of that done as quickly as possible um, so that can go off to be tested and off to my my tech editor um, let's see I have been working on my corrugated scarf um, the pattern is by a designer on Ravelry called Cabin 4 and I'll link to that in the show notes this is a really basic um, just ribbed and garter stitch a scarf that I'm knitting up as a thank you for my doctor um, this is where I am not I'm a little over halfway I'm more than a little over halfway I have 24 inches I believe left to knit on this part of the pattern that's the ribbing and garter stitch and then just these few rows there'll be a matching um, one by one ribbing on the far end the yarn that I'm using for this is um, Spirit Trail Fiberworks Brigantia and I misspoke last um, last podcast it's not merino it's Polworth and silk in a DK weight um, in the wisteria colorway which is this gorgeous kind of bluey grayish almost navy but not quite colorway that Jen dyed um, so moving along on that um, I find scarves so boring to knit but they are such great gift projects I'm just working away on this like while I'm watching a TV show or something I'll work on it for an hour and then I'll put it down so I'm hopeful that I can get that pretty pretty close to being done this week um, we'll see I would like to get it off the needles just to have it off the needles um, the next project that I'm working on um, which I made really good progress on because yesterday I, it was the day I worked on this is Boardwalk by Heidi Kermeyer this is from Brooklyn Tweed uh, volume 3 I actually remember the pattern this week I'm a little less scattered yay go me 
Um, it's just a really basic top. It has some um, kind of rib detail right here and can't see so great from that picture but it also has a matching rib detail at the little cap sleeves and the front. And so I finished up the stockinette of the body. This is knit in the round from that hem up to the armpits. So I finished that this week and then I started working on the back. I divided, here's the front, here's the back that I'm working on. Um, and I started working on the sleeves, which are knit all in one with the garment to make these cute little cap sleeves. I think you can see the, there's like a corrugated ribbed type. It's not focusing on that. Come over here. Um, little rib detail right there. I think you can see. Um, really interesting construction. Everything's kind of knit all together. Um, I'm a half, no, I'm a little more than halfway up the the sleeves so the back part of the sleeve whoops so I knock stuff over um, to come up to the shoulder um, I'll probably try to finish up the back to where you end and then start working on the front um, that's my goal for today we'll see we'll see if I get that far but um I'd like to try to have this done well I'd like to have this done no later than the 21st, which is when Stash Dash ends, um, because this would be some great yardage. Um, the yarn is Scottish Campion, um, which was Alice Starmore's line originally. Scottish Campion in the Mogat colorway. Um, it's a fingering weight Shetland. So I'd like to ha try to have this completely finished by the 21st, which gives me what is that? 18, 19, 20, 20, 13 days. We'll see. Um, but I have a couple of weekends in there, so maybe I can power through. I'd like to be able to have it to take on our vacation in September. We're going to go up to Yellowstone um, after I vend at the Salida Fiber Festival, which is in Colorado, September 8th and 9th, I believe it is. It's that weekend. Look in my book and tell you. 9th and 10th, excuse me, I was a day off. So um, we're going to drive up to Salida. My husband's going to go with me. I'll vend that weekend, and then we're going to go on to Yellowstone for, I think it's six days, something like that, and then turn around and drive back home, drive through Cody, uh, Wyoming. Um, we've been to Yellowstone before, but it was only like a one-day trip. We were headed to and from um, Utah, Montana, and we just didn't have the time to take so we're gonna go my hus husband's gonna do some fly fishing um, we're actually staying at a we've rented a cabin on a ranch that's just outside the east gate and uh, hopefully lots of relaxing time that's what we're hoping for um, and I will be off all of my weird surgical restrictions and so hopefully we'll be able to do anything I want which may include a little horseback riding while we're at the ranch we'll, we'll see that's kind of penciled in to see whether or not I want to go there. I'm fussy about horses, so not all of them are for me. Anyway, um, so that's the status on the boardwalk top. Um, I've also been working on my Cozy Memories blanket. Get some ends out of the way here. And here is where I am right now. So I'm just about at the six by six mark. I've got these three to go in. And I actually have two, two of those already knitted that I'll just sew into place. And then the last one will get knit into place. So lots of lots of great progress on that. Um, I still don't really have a specific size that I'm shooting for. I thought I would just go until it's until it looks good or I or I run out of minis. I'm not sure that's that's going to happen. I have a ton. I have a whole shoebox full. Um, but that's been fun to work on. That's been like just pick up and put down as, as I go, but it's growing pretty quickly. So that's, that's been fun to see. And then the last project that I started this week was another pair of just basic plain vanilla socks, self-striping socks, um, Desert Vista Dye Works. 
in their Viso sock base, which is 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon. Colorway is Janus. And it was, um, I can't remember what month it was, but it was themed off of the Women in, women in Music um, group that Susan died up. And it's, um, the inspiration is the cover of Rolling Stone with Janis Joplin on the front. So here's where I am right now. I've got the leg finished and I added my um, Fish Lips Kiss heel right here. The, um, I decided after I did the last pair, which was Calvin and Hobbes, that while I really like the Fish Lips Kiss heel, I did not really like it. To It breaks up the stripe pattern in an odd way that bothered my OCD-ness. I just, it was random. I, you know, because then all this beautiful, like four, 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 four stripes, all of a sudden there's like two rows or one row and it doesn't match up when you pick it back up. So I just decided, because I carry the same base that she does, it's my Rhiannon sock. And I have, um, I always have oodles of leftovers that I would just dye up some ones to match or go through ones that I had already had dyed up um, to, to sell as minis um, and do the fish lips kiss heel with that. So this is not, this color and this color are very close but they're not exact but they are close enough that it makes me happy and I didn't have to break the stripe pattern when I restarted on the front. Just go straight, straight through. So I have the foot left to knit on sock number one and probably we'll get that done this week and, and then start sock two. Um, just basic, cool socks. Um, oh, let me show you the rest of the colorway while I'm thinking about it. So that's Janice on Viso from Desert Vista Dye Works. All right, so that is all of my works, current works in progress. Um, I did want to say a shout out to Jennifer, who um, is the owner of Blaine Fleece and Fiber. She has a Ravelry group, and she also has an Etsy store. Um, she has some really, really cute sheep. Um, and she, Jen and I did a um, mini swap. So she sent me this whole bag of minis, some of which I think are hand spun, 99% sure. Like I, I believe this one is hand spun. So all those purples and greens. That does not want to focus, does it? Um, but all of these great, great colors. Lots of sort of neutrals and blues. Perfect for my blanket. Um, and she also sent me a tin of um, tea. It's from the Republic of Tea, but now I can't remember the flavor name. It's one of their cake, vanilla cake ones. I'll look it up and link to it in the show notes. Um, but that's what I'm drinking today in my pottery mug. And it's wonderful. I love anything vanilla. I'm a vanilla hound. So thank you, Jennifer, for sending those. Obviously, I'm enjoying them since I have the cup right here that I'm nursing my way through this morning. Um, and definitely we'll have the minis in my blanket in the relatively near future, too. So that's all of that. Let's talk quickly about spinning before I get on to the world of filament, because I know you all are curious about this gorgeous piece. Um, this week I finished up the Fiber Zombies um, Superwash BFL spin that I was doing. The original colorway is from Two If By Hand. And I spun this up into a two ply with 324 yards in it and four ounces. Um, so it's kind of a light sport slash heavy fingering weight, and I'm definitely going to do socks with it. All kinds of black and pink, hot pink, some lime green pops in there, all good stuff. So this was, um, the yardage will go towards Stash Dash, and then... It, this is also for my Spin the Bin project, so there's another one out of the bin. 
And I also misspoke last week about what I have left to do because I, you know what? I was not even taking Percocet last week, you guys, but my brain was definitely not 100% plugged in. So I have six batches of roving, not four, and two sets of bats left. So a little bit more than I had mentally remembered, um, but not, not excessively so. I still think there'll be no problem getting that done before the end of the year, and that, that is what I'm focusing on. So let me show you what's on the wheel for this week. This is one of the set, sets of bats. This is the bigger set that's four ounces. Um, it's a Funky Carolina bat, and the way Carrie did her bats was that she carded them and then sort of sort of pulled them slightly so um, they're not perfectly flat but this is cloudy day and it's got kind of a very pale gray some white a little bit of tan this really dark blue gray that I love obviously sparkle um, it's Polworth wool and then the sparkle that you see so this is one of the two bats, and they're each two ounces. So I started the singles of the other one already, and then this will go on my wheel once I finish the first half. And I have waiting in the bin four ounces of a really, really dark charcoal gray um, from Pigeon Roof Studios. That's um, merino and super fine, super fine merino and alpaca. So I was thinking it might work really well with this particular um, bat if I did the two of them. So I'm spinning them kind of fine, maybe a shawl. We'll see. Um, I think, I mean, this this could also possibly go as socks. That would be fun with a little bit of sparkle in it. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm focusing on. On the wheel this week. So that is all I have going currently on the needles on the wheel. Um, so let's talk about filament. I'm really excited about this. Um, I put links to all of our current uh, sort of social media plus our blog slash website um, in last week's episode show notes and I will do the same this week. So we're on Instagram and Pinterest. You can find our um, those two accounts that have lots of good visuals. Um, there is currently on our website a link to do pre-orders. So what Kathleen and I are going to do, we're releasing the very first issue, which is issue number one for February 2016, and it is um, a sort of vintage 1930s themed collection of eight pieces. There's two pullovers. Um, all the items are for women two pullovers, two cardigans, um, a cowl and mitts set, which I'm going to show you, a shawl, um, a pair of socks, and then um, a glove and beret set. So all of those are included and you have a couple of different options. If you decide you would like a print copy, um, you can go to our website, which is www knitfilament.com and you can pick up a pre-order copy. Those will ship after September 1st and there will be a code, a coupon uh, code uh, on your copy that will allow you to also download the Ravelry ebook. Once um, September 1st hits, all of the patterns will also be available individually for download as a PDF via Ravelry. So you have a couple of different options. You can also buy the ebook on Ravelry without getting a print copy. Um, we have a couple of fun little freebies that will go in with the print copy though if you do decide to buy it. Um, and we're currently offering free shipping on that issue. So saves you a little bit across the board. Um, that just gives you a little teaser if you'd like to pick up the print copy. Um, I'm excited about it. Kathleen used to do, well, still does, um, graphic art. And so she's done all our layout for us. And it's really eye catching. It's really fun. It's been great for me because I, it's, that is one of the things that I 
I can do, but I'm very slow at it. I'm very slow at it. And it's tedious for me. Or she's like, oh, I'm just going to get a, let me, let me, let me lay this out. And then 15 minutes later, it's in our Dropbox for me to look at. Maybe not 15 minutes, but let's say much less time than it would take for me to actually do it myself. So um, it's been a really good collaborative partnership. Um, and she and I, while I don't think that you would necessarily say, oh, you know, everything you design looks like hers, we don't match that closely. We do have a lot of similar things that we like to do with designs in terms of shaping, in terms of details, in terms of um, the style of things. So this was really a very happy partnership for the two of us to work on together. And we're looking to do Filament as a quarterly publication. Um, so February, or fall 2016 will kind of kick things off for us. And then we're getting our ducks in a row um, to kind of go full bore in 2017 with a spring, summer, fall, winter set of four issues. Um, and of course, I will be giving you guys all, all kinds of information about that as, as we go along. But let's at least start with a few pieces that we um, will be releasing in the fall. So this beautiful piece is actually Kathleen's design, but it's Willy Wonka Fibers yarn. So it's my yarn. It's the Caridwin sock base, which is the 100% superwash merino, uh, fingering weight in the bittersweet colorway. And the cardigan is also called bittersweet. So this is a um, yoke cardigan. You can see it's got some gorgeous um, textured stitch and bobble detail, and that wraps all the way around. onto the back, all the way around at the yoke. Um, it's fitted, so it's got waist shaping detail and then the bust increases front and back, so you get a nice tailored look. Um, garter stitch trim, collar, uh, bands and hem, and this great sleeve detail that's worked in garter stitch as well with these spun. These are just, um, the cuff is sewn over with the buttons added for detail. There's not actually buttonholes on this, but it makes for a really nice, elegant trim here on the cuff. Um, nice lightweight sweater that would be perfect to move you from late summer into fall. Um, multiple sizes. We've done multiple sizes for all of the garments. Um, very limited finishing on this. You just have the underarm seams to finish up and then of course attaching the buttons. Um, but that's basically it. Super wearable. I have tried this one on. It is one of my favorites. It looked stunning on our model. She's gorgeous. And then I also wanted to share with you a couple other pieces that go as great accessories with this particular garment. This is the rumble seat cowl. And that is knit in Malabrigo Rios. It's got this great textured pattern and it also comes with the pattern comes with a set of mitts with that same really great bobbly slip stitch texture to it. And let me show you these on. If you get yourself two skeins of worsted weight, you get to knit both the cowl and the mitts. Aren't they fun? These are a great stash buster project as well. They would work wonderfully with both a hand paint um, as well as solids. Nice, warm, and cozy. Um, and it, so if you um, get the two skeins, the mitts you can kind of do as your gauge swatch almost. These only take about 50 yards. And then the um, cowl takes about 125 to 150. It's got the same texture on it. It is um, long enough that you can double it so you can wear it more like a true cowl if you're so inclined. Like that. That will not really show in the picture, will it? So I can drop my mannequin down a little. 
There we go. Um, so you can wear it snugged up next to your neck, or you can wear it down and looped, just like that. Great to tuck into the front of a coat. Really, really versatile piece. So these are this is set is also Kathleen's of Kathleen's design. And then I wanted to show you guys one of my um, pieces. This is the shawl that I knit called Copperfield. It's knit in Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which is the fingering weight. Um, the color is not reading so great. It's there. Oh, I've just misplaced the name. I'll link to it in the show notes. It's their kind of rusty, rusty orange color. So this is a triangular shawl. Takes three skeins. Um, it's got a set of texture patterns, very easy. And then this um, almost like wheat sheaf uh, pattern and it's just bound off with a very simple yarn over um, garter stitch edge here at the bottom. So it is plenty big to wear as a true shawl. You can also, um, if you wanted to pick up an extra skein of yarn and make this even lacier, you could go up probably one or two needle sizes and it would still be happy. Um, to make it a little bit longer if you were if you wanted or you can continue just working this bottom pattern um, to extend the lace down if you're so inclined but it also works as a cowl sized shawl if you wanted to tuck that into a coat So those are the first three patterns that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, we'll have some more sweaters next week as well as um, some of the uh, other accessories. It's a nice mix of things. Like I said, um, half are sweaters and then half are smaller, smaller pieces. Um, embers, I think, is this colorway. Sorry, I had to think about something else. That is not true at all to life. Nope, still not. No, that's probably close right there. Um, I would say all of the projects in there are at least easy intermediate. I think you would want some experience with either reading charts or having done some shaping if you're looking at a garment. Um, nothing is nothing is in the scary crazy um, realm. The other sweater that Kathleen did that's a pullover has some cables in it so that's again it's not a beginner project but if you go slow you shouldn't have any issues with it. There is nothing where you're cabling on both sides of the fabric um, or anything like that so um, yeah I would say easy intermediate to intermediate for the level of difficulty. Um, and like I said, all of these are sort of themed on 1930s things. So for instance, the two sweaters I did, um, one is themed on Carol Lombard, who was Clark Gable's third wife. Um, if you haven't seen any of her movies, you should definitely think about running those on Netflix. She was an amazing comedian. She apparently had quite the sense of humor, maybe a little earthy, but um, you know, it's hard to imagine that when you look at her with her perfect blonde hair and those gorgeous silk dresses of the 1930s with the backless look. Um, interesting woman. And then um, Claudette Colbert, who was also, she happened to also be in a Clark Gable movie, which is one of my favorites. It's ha it happened one night, but um, she was kind of one of the reigning leading ladies for a ton of years in Hollywood. Um, from early, early in the film industry's history all the way up well into the early 50s. And I think she lived to be 
92, 93. Uh, and she had a good long run. Anyway, two of my favorite Hollywood actresses who are kind of from that golden age of Hollywood period. Um, so I will put all the links uh, again in the show notes so you guys can go and check some stuff out. Um, Pre-orders are open. So if you absolutely love what I've shown you today and you think you'll love the other five pieces, by all means, grab yourself a copy if you're so inclined. Um, otherwise, the um, we'll be kind of rolling the patterns out and obviously leaving pre-orders open for a while. Um, I'm just really excited about this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. If you check out our pin interest uh, folders, our boards, We've created some kind of preliminary ones that will give you just a little sneak peek of the flavor of what we're going to be doing for um, spring, summer, and then next winter of 2017. We don't have fall 2017 um, kind of hammered out yet. We're discussing a couple of different options. Um, but anyway, all kinds of exciting things to come is what I'm trying to say. So um, I think that's it for today. I appreciate you guys tuning in to um, hear about all the goings on in my neck of the woods. Um, until I talk to you again, which will be next Sunday or Monday, probably I'll record on Monday the 15th next time. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy a little bit uh, more of your summer weather. Get out, spend some time with your friends, your family. Um, hopefully you have some time for some crafty crafty goodness as well at your end. Uh, and until I talk to you again, have a great week. Thanks, you guys. Bye.